actually make sure you're going into quality and you're invested in the right things. Professional advice is really good to have, particularly if you get it from Devere. Hey, I'm Nigel Green. I'm the CEO of Devere Group, which is the largest international financial advisory group in the world. Once a week, I do a talk show where I answer any questions that you've got. They can be based on finances or they can be based on personal habits, personal routines. Ask me anything you like and I'm going to attempt to answer it to the best of my ability. Okay, so the first question that I've got is... What's the most common mistakes that people make investing in crypto? It's actually the most common mistake that people make in any type of investment is to go with a trend and perhaps a friend's advice. So often people say, this crypto is going to do super well. And actually, you're buying at the peak. So in other words, lots of people are piled into a particular crypto and you're buying, hey, sure, it's done 10%. But is it going to keep doing 10%? So the most common mistake is take advice from a friend or from somebody else and pile into something that's just made a huge run. If you're investing money, then you should always diversify. You should always make sure that you don't just talk to one person, but you actually get professional financial advice. They make lots of mistakes when they're investing into various stocks do you know what the mistakes they make? They actually invest into something that's on a massive trend upwards. And they think because the line's going straight up in the sky, it's going to keep doing so. Reality is that when you're investing, you should always diversify and you should always take personal advice. Right now, if you're looking at the market, you're going to see various sectors that are doing well. If it's my money, I'm going to be investing in mainstream companies. If I'm investing in crypto, I'm going to be looking at the biggest, the best cryptos like Bitcoin, like Ethereum. I'm going to be looking to invest and I'm going to invest not all on one day. So instead of going in straight, all my money, I'm going to be drip feeding it into those cryptos. And then if I'm investing in stock, I'm going to be looking at quality companies, I'm not going to go all in on the same day, I'm actually going to be making sure that I put some in today, some in maybe in a couple of days time, I'm going to drip feed into the market, because if it goes down, I can buy more of them. Nobody knows exactly what the future is. You invest into the best things and then you don't try and time the market. Just remember, you can't time the market. No successful investor has ever been successful by timing it. You look at the top people, Warren Buffett, Ray Dalio, all their success is by choosing quality investing for the longer term. You see a stock going down or crypto going down. You think, oh, it's cheap now. Don't try and catch a falling knife. Actually make sure you're going into quality and you're invested in the right things. Professional advice is really good to have, particularly if you get it from Devere. Next question that you've got on here is how do you choose investments that match your goals? It's actually a super important thing to do. So when you're looking at your goals, what's the time horizon? What are you really trying to achieve? Are you trying to make sure that your money is ready for you in two, three years? Or are you prepared to go for the longer term? For me, I'll actually look at three different areas in order to invest successfully. I'll look at, first of all, an emergency fund. Just imagine, there's always something happening in life. So just to have two or three months money behind you in case something happens is always a good idea. You talk to a financial advisor, they can put you in an interest account where you can actually get your money super fast, just in case something goes wrong car goes wrong, something happens with the apartment or the house that you're living in, always have an emergency fund. And then when you look at the short term, that's things that are going to happen in the next five years, then that's a different way to invest your money. Now you want to get a return because emergency money needs to be in something where you've got some access. If you're looking at three to five years and that's where your goals are, then you should be looking to invest in real assets that are going to beat inflation and make money. And that's where you can invest in a good investment fund that's diversified and going to make you a good return. Then when you're looking past five years, what should you do? Well, then you need to also consider tax advice. 
Because as you accumulate money, the more money you accumulate, the more potential the tax man's going to be taking some off you. And let's face it, in life, it's tough enough to earn money, let alone ending up paying tax when you earn it and then paying tax when you invest it. So if you talk to a good financial advisor, they can structure the product so it's tax efficient. That's super important over the medium term. Particular nationalities need particular products. So the UK, if you live there, might be an ISA as an example. It's a tax-free account. Another nationality, like a French person, for example, there's particular products that are suitable. And even if you're living somewhere around the world, you can put it in and put it in a product that's not only going to grow, but it's going to grow tax-free. Imagine if you're in the wrong product, you pay 54% tax if you're French. So knowing the right product and talking to an advisor is super important. You want good growth and you want tax efficiency. Think about it this way. If you were going somewhere close to perhaps where you live, you'd walk. It's the most efficient way to go. You wouldn't take the car out of the garage and go to somewhere that was perhaps half a mile away or perhaps a kilometer. If you wanted to go somewhere that was 10 kilometers, okay, well then you'd probably use the car or the bus or something to get there. It's the right vehicle. If you were going perhaps to another country, then you're not gonna walk, you're not gonna take the car or the bus, you're gonna get perhaps an aeroplane or a boat. It's the right form of transport for the right distance. So when you're investing money and know where your goals are, then make sure you know you're in the right vehicle for the right term. How do you match your investments to your goals? Really talk to an advisor, but just realize there's different vehicles for different time periods. That way you can make it effective, and that way you can make sure you're not only making money, but you're tax efficient as well. The next question that someone has asked is, which one is a better investment? Is it crypto, is it stocks, or is it real estate? Okay, I mean, it's a really, really interesting question. Should you go with crypto? Should you go with perhaps something in the property market? Or should you go with stock? Sometimes it can be a personal opinion. I'd always go for me that you should diversify. So if you think things are a good investment, don't put it all in one area. That would be my personal opinion. But when I come to investing, I feel perhaps rightly, that crypto is more volatile. When you're thinking about risk to reward, I think that over the medium term, it will give you a higher return, but it's more volatile. Have you got the stomach, if I can say, for crypto? Because it's all right saying, I want to get a high return, but when it drops by 30% and you put 10,000 in and it's now worth seven, or perhaps it's worth 5,000, 50%'s gone, how'd you feel? because most investors are emotional. And I know the feeling, because even though I'm an advisor, I can get emotional too. I've invested, I believe it's the right time, it's a good investment, but easier said than done. So when you're investing, particularly in something like crypto, you have to realize that it's volatile. Are you really prepared for a fall and just to let it stay? And if you're not, you shouldn't be using crypto. You should be looking at something less volatile. So now we come to stock. If you're in good companies, it's less volatile. There's still, of course, some volatility. But nevertheless, you can invest in top companies. And yes, you could get perhaps a 20% fall, but you know there's good upside. And you know over any five-year period since the war, you'd have made approximately 10% per annum. In other words, stock investing in real companies is going to make you a return over a period of time. So you know that you're going to be able to get a good return, particularly if you talk to a financial advisor. And the stock, of course, there is another advantage that if you have to sell it, you can. Of course, it's volatile. So again, you've got the potential downside, but you've got access. Then we talk about property. Property is a different form of investment. And of course, everybody, in my opinion, should own a property. Should you speculate by having another property? It's again, a personal choice. For me, if you invest into property and I need some money, I'm not gonna sell the roof to access some cash. So it's a bit, a bit less flexible. So if you're investing in property, 
again, you know, over a period of time, you're highly likely to make a good return. But you've also got to realize that really, particularly with property, it's not accessible. You've got to be prepared to leave it for five to 10 years, and then you're highly likely to have doubled your money, including the yield that you'd have made on it. Is it for everybody as a second asset? For some, it is. For me, diversification. Why? I like crypto. I think it's got massive potential. But I'm not going to put my life savings in it because I know that it's volatile. I like stock because I can have with a financial advisor, pick good companies that are going to get me a good return. And of course, I'd like to buy a property that I own. I don't have to pay rent to somebody else. Am I going to buy a second one? For me, actually, no. And that goes against what some of the people that work with me say. And they're right. Actually, owning a second one could be a good one. But I'm a little bit impatient. So naturally, I know that my own impatience can get the better of me. So think when you're investing, there's two things you've got to look at. You've got to look at what you feel is going to give you the good return. Are you impatient? And can you take the volatility? And then you can have with a financial advisor, good advice to go in the right portfolio for you. So should you go with crypto? Some people, yes. Should you go with stock? Some people, yes. Should you invest into lots of properties and build up a property portfolio? If you're patient, for sure. It's a personal decision, but you should always take good financial advice to make sure you understand the risks and understand, more importantly, the right asset class, the right place. So when we take property, where would you invest? Has someone done the research? Where's the best yield? Where's the best place to invest? Where's the growth? Where are companies going? Perhaps the transport is improving. So taking advice can mean you don't just buy property, but you've actually gone into the best. Same thing with shares, same thing with crypto. Invest in the best, making sure you're in the right fund at the right time can mean you put yourself in the future at some stage where you never have to worry about money again. Again, that's what good financial advice does. Put you in a situation where you've built up money and you never have to worry about it again. And that's why a good advice, even listening to my talk show, can make sure that you get the best advice and get the best thing for you. Next question. Do you think the crypto bull run will happen in 2024? Wow. Okay, if I had a crystal ball and I knew what the future is, of course, I'd be super, super wealthy. I've been lucky in life. I've been able to earn some good money and learn about investment. And by listening to my podcast and my talk show, you can also learn from my mistakes and also about investment. So let's go with the odds, crypto bull run. Okay, well, we know if we go with history that whenever Bitcoin has halved, and that's happening in just two and a half months. Whenever it's happened, then there's been a crypto bull run. Okay, let me explain what it means. Bitcoin has a limited supply, 21 million. When Bitcoin reaches certain points, the supply to the market halves. When that's happened historically, there's been a bull run. And Bitcoin has done incredibly well. In fact, each time you'd have made well over 100%. So is there a chance of a crypto bull run? Yes, absolutely. Why is Bitcoin so relevant to the rest of the crypto market? Well, the reason is this. Bitcoin is the headline. If people are going to invest in crypto, in general, they learn about Bitcoin first. So if Bitcoin's doing well, people come in to the crypto market. And because they've come into the crypto market, they then get used to it and they start investing in other crypto. However, is it guaranteed? No, it's not guaranteed. The odds are in favor of a crypto bull run, but I can't give a guarantee. In fact, if you want a guarantee, you need to buy a fridge or something like that. Not an investment. Trust me, there's no such thing as a guarantee. Even if you put your money in a bank account, it depends on the bank. If you put your money under the bed, guess what? Depends on your security. So if you're investing and you've got money, there's always a risk. So when you're investing, just remember, there's always a risk. You need to take on board whatever that risk may be. For me, 
is take financial advice, talk to someone, at least understand the odds, and always diversify. And if you diversify, history proves you make money. Good advice, diversification, really is proven to make a difference. And that's why you should talk to somebody at Devere. The next question that I've got here is, what are the assets that have made you wealthy? Wow, there's a question. Well, I guess that I'd say investing in myself is the number one thing that has made me wealthy. So just imagine I come from a relatively poor family. My dad was a preacher, so we lived in a church house and we didn't have so much money. In fact, there was a stage where my dad was struggling just to buy, have enough money to make sure that he could get by. In other words, even the food bill was a struggle. So I knew at a young age that money was important and I knew at a young age to value it and to realize that also as a principle in life, you needed to really make sure that you planned it and you really organized yourself. In fact, my dad as a preacher used to say to me so many times, God didn't mean for you to live in a mud hut. He meant for you to develop your talents, use your talents and be successful and help other people. It was his philosophy. So of course it was drummed into me from a young age that I've got to use my talents. So when I was young, 18 years of age, I came into the financial industry. I saw it as a way of one, being able to accumulate some money myself, but also help other people accumulate money. For me, it was the perfect combination. I realized very, very quickly, however, that I needed to develop my skills. My issue was that I was 18. The youngest person in the company, apart from me, was 25. And I realized that people thought, at 18, I was too young. So I thought, okay, how can I overcome that? And the only way I could overcome it was by really trying to learn. I actually had a poor self-image and I thought I was a bit thick. And that was because when I was at school, I trust struggled with concentration. My brain would go from here to here to listen to a teacher, particularly if they were boring, was hard. But I knew I had to learn. So I actually spent three months salary. Seems crazy now, but I did. I took the money and I invested in courses. I spent my evenings learning, learning how to be a professional. And it seems crazy now, because people come into various industries and they don't invest in themselves. I guess I was lucky because I got the right course, but it gave me the basics of learning so I could communicate effectively and understand the markets. And of course, then when clients asked me questions, I could answer them. So the most effective investment was in me. But then I also realized I was in the investment industry by studying and I'm naturally statistical. Rather than be emotional, I know that if I look at stats, then I can learn. In fact, you'll see on my arm, I've got a whoop. It gives me the stats on my body. On here, I've got an Apple Watch. You realize I'm crazy, but I like to know the numbers. I like to know the stats. If you're not like that, you can talk to a financial advisor. But by learning statistically what's most likely to be good as an investment, then you can make sure you beat the market and get good returns. So my next best investment was learning about stocks and shares. And I must confess, perhaps I've been lucky or maybe I've got good taste, but I've also bought properties. And often it's been unintentional, to be honest, but I've bought properties and I've walked in and gone, wow, I really like this. And when I bought property, I've always made money. I think it's more by luck than judgment, if I'm honest. But nevertheless, by investing in property in good locations, I actually have made good returns. So in life, I've been lucky. I worked super hard. I invested in myself. And I've also invested consistently. And today, I make more money investing than I do working, which you might ask, why work? Well, work is a challenge, keeps my brain active, and I like the job that I do, which is advise people on how they can make money. And I've got a saying, which is big in my company, which is have fun, make money. I always think if you're in the company, then make money for yourself, make money for your clients, because then they come back and do more. But always, whatever you do in life, have fun. And the best thing you can do in life, for me at least, 
is make sure you enjoy whatever you do. So investing in things that you like doing is also super valuable because you feel good about yourself. And I tell you what, when you feel good about yourself, you perform better. So if I'm gonna advise, invest in yourself, learn or talk to a financial advisor, try and pick good things, but always make sure you feel good about yourself. Developing that within you makes a massive difference. You perform so much better when you feel good about you because you're loving what you do. Thank you for listening to the answers to my question. Please make sure you subscribe. Please make sure you follow because I'm always going to give the best advice, the best information that I can.